One of the most anticipated AI text to image generation features has just launched in Midjourney, and I can't wait to show it to you. Let's jump in. Since the day AI text to image generators were launched, people have been asking for this feature, and that is consistent characters across image generations. Being able to generate the same character, the same person, or the same animal or mascot or creature across multiple generations. And up until now, this has almost been impossible. Sure, there've been little workarounds and ways that you could do something kind of similar, but they were very complex or almost impossible. And now Midjourney has just launched this feature into their software that makes it so easy to generate consistent characters across multiple image generations. I've got this article pulled up from Petapixel talking about this feature, and it says you can now recreate the same character across different AI images on Midjourney. And you see an example here of an older gentleman wearing different outfits in three different photos, holding a camera in one, which he has some weird finger stuff going on there but different filters, different colors, but you can see it's the same person across those three image generations. It says for years, photographers have been able to make images of the same person in different settings, and now AI can do that as well. And as you can imagine, this is a pretty huge feature for AI art generation, and this is really a game changer for what we can now do, and it opens up so many possibilities. You think about if you are a e-commerce seller, if you are a apparel seller, t-shirts, uh, or whatever you're doing, now you can create mock-ups of the same person across multiple images. Now you can use the same uh, creature or the same animal character across different designs, across different products, across different photos, and it's just pretty incredible. So over in Midjourney, in one of my servers, I created an image of a dog. I asked Midjourney a very simple prompt. I said, give me a small do cartoon dog that stands on two legs, cute, mascot, colorful. Now I didn't really adjust my settings, I just kind of left them how they were, so I'm not doing a lot with the settings here, but it gave me these four cute cartoon dogs. I selected this dog as my dog that I wanted to use as a character reference. So here's the dog I selected. As we scroll down, I use the character reference feature in Midjourney that's now been launched to make my ju dog jump through the air in a crowd of people. You can see the image here that in all four of these images, this is my dog. This is the dog that I created, the character I created, and now he is doing something different. If we take that a little bit further, I ask Midjourney to make my dog lay down and look happy. I ask Midjourney to make my dog in the style of pop art. There's so much you can do with this. Here's another example. I generated this image with Midjourney of a man wearing a black t-shirt for a, to use for a mock-up so I could put my design on this t-shirt. Well, I wanted to change his color of t-shirt, so now with this new feature, do you want to get better results and more creativity out of your AI text to image generation? If so, I wanna invite you to go download my free prompt guide over at kerryegler.com slash prompts. This is a style guide that's gonna give you 171 different words you can use in your prompts to get a whole plethora of different styles and different types of art out of your AI image generation tools. So just go over to kerryegler.com slash prompts. You can download that style guide completely free. So now with this new feature, I popped it into Midjourney. I asked Midjourney to make him stand on a tennis court and I asked it to make him wear a white colored t-shirt. So now it came out with these images. And you can see, this is my guy right here from this image, but now he's on a tennis court instead of in a city and he's wearing a white t-shirt. So now I can add different designs onto the same model. So how does this feature work? And it's actually pretty simple. And so let me read to you from the actual announcement from Midjourney, and then I'll show you how this works in a prompt. So you can see the announcement in the announcements channel in the Midjourney Discord. It says this is similar to the style reference feature, except instead of matching a reference style, it tries to make the character match a character reference image. How it works, all you do is simply type dash dash C-R-E-F, and the URL of the image after your prompt uh, with the image of a character. You can use dash dash CW to modify the reference strength from 100 to zero. So how much does the reference Im image impact the new image? And you can see at strength 100, it's defaults, is, defaults to use the face, hair, and clothes, 
But if you want to change some of those features, you'll need to go down in strength. Now this says at strength zero, it'll just focus on the face, which is good for changing outfits and hair. I found that somewhere maybe in the 50, CW50 range uh, is maybe better for this, but you can test it yourself. So what it's meant for, the biggest thing here I wanna point out is that it says, this feature works best when using characters made from mid-journey images. It's not designed for real people. Uh, and photos and will likely distort them as regular image prompts do. This is the biggest thing here is that um, you don't want to use you know, photos or maybe generations from other software. The best results are going to be from mid-journey generated characters. And right now that's what you want to focus on. So over here in mid-journey, how do we actually use this? Well, it's very simple. If I want to use this dog right here as my character, I can first just open up this dog in the browser and I can copy this URL right here. So I'm going to copy that. Back in mid journey, I'm going to type in my prompt. So I can put in slash imagine space, and I'm just gonna type in a cartoon dog in the style of cyberpunk. Okay, so I wanna change the style of my dog here. Now, after I put in my very simple prompt there, I'm gonna type dash dash C R E F space, and then I paste the URL of the photo that I wanna use. And lastly, I wanna adjust the character weight. So I can type in a space, and I can put in dash dash CW space, and then how much I want that image to affect my new image generation. In this case, I'm gonna use 100, because I want my new image to be very close to that one. I just wanna change the style, so we're gonna see how that affects it. Okay, so here's my new generation that I got of my dog. And you can see it looks quite different, but that's my dog. If I go over here, you can see that's the same character from that photo. We simply changed the style. Now let's do one more quick example and let's take that character weight down to, let's say, 40 and see what happens. I'm also going to turn off raw mode and see how that affects it. So let's click off raw mode in our settings. Let's paste our prompt in there and take down our character weight to 40 and we'll let that load up and see what that looks like. Okay, our dog is generated and you can see here that what happened when we took that character weight down to 40, we got some more of the cyberpunk features in there. So that's what you'll find when you lower that character weight is that what you put in the prompt will have much more effect on it, uh, on your, on your end, end image then if you have that character weight high, it's gonna be a little bit closer to the original image. So you can see here, this is character weight 40. Here's our original image, right? And now we're down to character weight 40. And you know, it's still pretty much our dog character, but now he's got some robotic stuff. Now he's got some glasses. Now he's standing in this kind of cyberpunk looking city. Some of the color has changed comparatively to when we had it at 100, there was much less change. There's a few elements that change, but much less. To wrap this up, I think this is going to be an amazing feature that's gonna be incredibly useful, and I wanna know how you're going to use it. So let me know down in the comments, how are you planning to use this character reference feature? See you next week.